Hey, good morning. Captain Roger, let's go for a walk. Apparently I'm racing a rainstorm before uh, we finish today, so hopefully we'll get done with this before uh, it opens up and pours on me. So, I really wanted to focus on uh, people walking with God more than just events out of the Bible. But I can't skip over this one weird little story that everyone knows but no one really knows. And that's the thing with the manna. First, it happened only a month after people left Egypt. Life is uh, a little more surreal than you might expect for them. I mean, think about it. After a series of miracles, they left the only life and place that they knew. And now, they're out wandering in a desert wilderness far beyond the borders of Egypt, following a big cloud that somehow isn't the God that they follow, but sometimes seems to have their God in it. And the more that I think about it, <clears throat> the more I appreciate just how it is that these folks gave in to their uncertainty and started to worry that there was no way that they were going to survive out here. And like I said, it's only been a month, but they started to complain about the lack of food. And they said, why didn't the Lord just kill us into Egypt? Why bring us out here to starve to death? And again, trying to be fair, I see where they might have had some concern about the whole thing. But the truth is, these folks had seen that God cared for them, modeled in dozens of ways over that month. And before then, and they really had no good excuse not to trust God, except for the complete unfamiliarity they had in doing so. I hear that last part. That's important. They'd only been walking with God for just over a month. They weren't used to walking with God. They hadn't built up any kind of trust yet, other than that they'd seen he does what he promises. So even though Moses seems a little irritated by the whole thing, the Lord doesn't. He just sits everyone down and explains that from this point on, every morning, He's going to give everyone enough bread to eat for the whole day. And starting the next morning, they get manna. Now I can't say exactly what it is that manna is. It sounds like it was a kind of a sweet flower that crusted the ground like a snow of cornflakes every morning. And it had this strange characteristic. No matter how much of it you picked up, you only ever had just enough for the day, except on the next to last day of the week when you were to pick up twice as much so that you didn't need to do any work on the Sabbath day. And in most ways, this is so much better than Grubhub, but there were still people who tried to pick up more than they were supposed to, or who would try to save some back so they could save it overnight even though they were told not to do that. Um, and there were some who went and tried to gather some on the Sabbath day even though they already had enough and they were supposed to be taking the day off. These folks got, well, I wouldn't say exactly a rebuke. They got a comment from God asking how long they were going to refuse to honor the instructions that he gave them. Now, if you're going to walk with God, you really should walk with God and not go your own way, right? Don't say to someone, oh, you can lead me, and then ignore the directions that they give. On that note, my directions are to finish my walk. And it looks like I need to do it quick before the rain starts. So, grace and peace to y'all. See you tomorrow.